Hello, thanks for joining me for our last chapter in Summertime with 2 Samuel. So today is Thursday, June 24th, and this is the 24th chapter, the very last chapter of the book of 2 Samuel. Again, our hero from both books of Samuel is King David. King David um, had kindled the anger of God again. Uh, we're not even sure what he did this time. It never tells us. But he's kindling the anger of the Lord against him. So there is a punishment to be had. There, David does a census. And uh, God tells him to go and do it. And it ends up being the census that is the bad thing. So this is what leaves me with a very uncomfortable, in a very uncomfortable place. Why is a census a bad thing? And the scholars say they never tell us why in the scripture, but there is an inference here. And what the inference is, is that when David counts the people, they belong to him. Instead of being a part of God's holy uh, priestly group that is talked about in Exodus, they are belonging to the king. And I think that this is something that Samuel himself would have advised the people when they initially asked for a king. That, you know, you have God. Why do you need a king? We need a king. So this is maybe what the guilt of the census has to do with. So the whole idea that once these people are counted by you, King David, they belong to you. It's also an attitude that we see at play in the story. David's actions toward Bathsheba and her husband, Uriah the Hittite. You can do whatever you want and whatever you please because these people belong to you. Amnon, his relationship with his sister Tamar, taking what he wants because those people belong to him. And then the usurping of Absalom while his father sat on the throne. This idea of taking liberties with the people that you are supposed to be serving and protecting and guiding, this idea is adverse to what God had intended for the leadership of Israel to be. So that may be the sin of counting the people. At any rate, it is a sin and it's a bad one and he receives a punishment. And so Gad is a seer. He is a a wise person, and he's an advisor to the king. And he suggests that there are three different options for David's punishment. And it's almost as if he's asking David to choose one of the three punishments. None of them are good. And we don't see David making any kind of choice. He just responds with, I'm better off in God's hands than the hands of a human being. And so the pestilence fell on Israel from that day. 70,000 people died because of David's sin. And then the angel of the Lord who had come to destroy things was about to enter Jerusalem and his hand was stayed back by God. And then David intervenes. And at the advice of Gad, purchases a threshing floor and offers sacrifices to God. Now, what's significant about this is that the man who owns the threshing floor, his name is Arana, he offers everything free of charge to King David, of course. Here, take it, take all of it. And David protests. David says, I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God that cost me nothing. And to me, it is the second to last verse of this chapter. But it reiterates the commitment, even though he's sinned and he's getting punishments, the commitment David has to God. I will not offer anything to the Lord, which costs me nothing. In other words, it's got to cost me something to be able 
to offer this to God as, as an offering. Otherwise, it's your offering, not mine. Do you understand the difference? So he protests. He says, I will not offer burnt offerings to that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen, 50 shekels of silver, built the altar to the Lord, and the Lord answered his supplications for the land and the plague was averted from Israel. So he was able to save his people by being committed to his God and making sacrifice himself. This is my sacrifice to you, God. This is the repairing of the relationship between David and God. And that's how they leave it at the end of the book. Of course, you know from yesterday's video that there is more about King David in 1 Kings, and you can read that. You can also ring, read about David in 1 Chronicles. So we'll, you know, that's where you know it's a kind of a duplication, but not exactly, of the, some of the stories of the uh, formulation of the nation of Israel and the Hebrew people. So I would invite you to continue on your education on your own. I don't have plans to do another chapter a day uh, storytelling video series right now to, to tell you about. So just uh, look for things to come in in August and closer to September in late August. But, the, but for now, um, please continue to read in these stories, especially First and Second Kings. I would highly recommend that you read those two books, Elijah and then Elisha, and get because there are more stories about the kings of Israel in there. And there are more stories about prophets like Nathan and Gad and Samuel. <laughs> there, there are more things for you to discover about the nuances of faith and the different ways in which God interacts with humankind through the biblical lens. So I would encourage you to do that. Thank you so much for all of you who reached out that you enjoyed getting these daily emails and, and getting this video every single day. And uh, a lot of you had told me that the, the goriness and some of the, you know, the, the fighting and the marauding and all the things going on reading uh, was was a little tough to take at first it's pretty violent um however i think there's good lessons in each chapter of our scripture and we just have to know how to find it so be blessed thank you for being on this journey with me